Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a Some Odd Girl image with an alcohol ink background and this little image is called Watering Can Tia. Watering Can Tia. Tia is her name and I will have that linked down below for you. And so I'm going to start by Copic coloring her and I decided to use a little bit darker of a skin tone uh, today than my normal because I wanted this to feel very springy and just like she had been sun-kissed and I guess because I'm just wanting the sun to come out. So for the skin I used E21, E11, E13, and R24, the cheek color. And it does look a little um, weird until all the alcohol evaporates and it dries out and then you you see it's uh, you know it's it's true color and I think it makes a really pretty you know like I said kind of sun-kissed uh, skin tone and everything. Several months ago I'd gotten one of those uh, lift off ink pads from uh, Ranger and I had never played with it before and so I had an idea for this card and I wanted to play with that liftoff ink and uh, test it out. So um, after I get done with all the Copa coloring, I am going to be doing an alcohol ink background and playing with that. And the, I'm going to use a background stamp that's from Simon called uh, Mod Flowers, I believe it is. But anyway, so um, finishing up the, her skin tones here, just working on the legs a little bit. Not a lot of uh, real estate down here, so um, not, um, and it's lower. I'm not using all the lightest colors in, in that. And then for her tongue, I used the R20 and then just went over it with, I think, the E11, just so it wasn't such a bright pink. Okay, for the hair, I'm using E50, YR21, Y26, and E44. And I'm sorry if the, the lighting quality is not quite as good while I'm doing this Copic coloring. I went over to my side table where my Copics are to do the filming, um, hoping that the, the light would be uh, decent because uh, I have a pretty good LED light over that. And it's more easy to pull out my markers because they're right there in front of me than where I do all the rest of my filming, which is in front of a window. But it kind of kind of gave a lot of shadows so probably we'll just have to go back to filming in front of the window and and uh, moving my markers as over as needed but it's not like these days filming in front of the window gives much better light because most of the time it's gloomy and cloudy and rainy and yes that that's the way it's been in North Texas for a while now every once in a while we get a nice day but for the most part, it's usually always cloudy, but then a lot of times it's raining as well. But anyway, I thought this was a little bit of a different take on a blonde hair color. And again, I was just trying to go with that, uh, you know, kind of a sun-kissed look. And so I, I, I really like it. I'm probably going to use this uh, hair color uh, some more. I thought it turned out really cute. Okay, for her shirt, I'm using E93 YR02 and YR18. It's a little bit tiny shirt. Uh, for her denim, I'm using B91, B93, B97, B99, and W3. And I know W3 and with all those Bs. But if you put the 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 W on kind of after all the other you get colored with all the other blues it gives kind of a stone washed denim look and I thought that turned out super cute and I'm uh, sorry my my battery died while I was in the middle of that but you saw a pretty good bit of, of the coloring of that and as like I said it just gives a, a little stone washed look and I used it more on the little folds on uh, the bottom of her shorts and just kind of used the blue in the lines. Alright for her uh, boots, I used Y11, YR04, and R08. Now, this color combination I was not real thrilled about. Um, it, it sounded better than it turned out, and I had to do a lot of blending 
and scrubbing over things and so it bled and so I had to do a lot of cleaning up. Um, the watering can as you saw there is YG11, YG13, and YG17. So I'm just uh, going over putting a lot of that dark down where that bleed over was. Covered it up really good. Um, I think it's fine. It, it looks good. You can't hardly tell there was that little bit of a bleed over there at all. And I'm in, gonna uh, end up taking this little bitty tiny ornate stamp that I had. Um, it was out of an old set. Um, but if you look through your, you know, all your stamps, you'll find some sort of little ornate something. You can stamp on things like this watering can, and it just really um, gives a really cute design to it. I did the the holes in the watering can with the darkest color but I'm going to go back with my uh, Sakura Stardust pens and this is the Sakura um, black glaze right here that I put on her eyes and uh, her irises and her eyelashes but I'm going to use the Stardust on those dots on the watering can you know the holes and then to put some uh, dots on her boots and some stripes on her boots. So I just thought that just added a little bit of something and a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of texture uh, too. So that will finish up. Oh and I used my Signo White Uniball pen to put the the white highlight dots in her eyes. So now we're going to get started with the alcohol ink background and the alcohol ink colors that I'm using and I'm using the Ranger White Upo paper and so I am using um, Meadow Wild Plum Aquamarine Sunshine Yellow I'm also using the blending solution and the Pearl Mixative okay what I didn't know about the Pearl Mixative is that it will not lift with the alcohol lift pad so if I had it to do over again, uh, which I will do this technique over again, I will not use any of the metal or pearl mixatives with, um, with this technique. So then just letting it dry a little bit and I went and got some, a piece of a, a foil. And I let the background dry a little bit too much, but I did get some some foil in there. And basically, it's where the two colors meet. It stays a little tackier longer, and the foil will stick to that. And so it gives it a really pretty kind of veining, marbly kind of look to your alcohol ink pad. Like I said, I did let it dry a little bit too long before I started doing that. So I didn't get quite as much, but a little bit here and there. I th thought it still added a little bit of something, something to it. All right, here's that mod flower background, and I'm just inking up really well with that lift ink pad and stamping it down. So um, now I'm going to put in the inside of my card, and I'm just going to cover the the, the one panel because I just want it on one panel. And here's where I go, huh? Why is this splotchy? What, what's the deal? And I'm like, I'm not pressing hard enough. I press hard. It's still splotchy. But it is where the, the pearl mixative was and it didn't lift. So um, I'm going to put my sentiment in the middle of there and dress it up. So I think it's going to look cute. I haven't done that yet, but um, I think it'll work. So now after that is dry on the front and everything, you just take a paper towel and you buff it. And then you can see that those lines and everything from the, the stamp. And I think it turned out super cute, even with the little void areas. I still think it turned out super cute. Okay, so my image I cut out on my brother's scan and cut, and I'm just taking a the Tuxedo Memento black marker and going around the edge. And I, I really like getting rid of the white edge. I, I really think it makes your cutouts look a whole lot better. And I'm just really careful to um, hold it on the back side of the image. That case, in that case, if my pen slips, then I'm not going to mark all down the front of my 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 image that I worked so hard coloring. And you don't want to use your Copic for this because it will wick into your coloring. You want to make sure you use a water base 
marker for doing that. Okay, here's where I'm going to stamp that little uh, design on the uh, watering can. I didn't get a really good impression, but I wasn't too worried about it. You know, watering cans aren't supposed to look perfect. So um, I, I still thought it was very cute. I, I like how it turned out. And then I realized that I hadn't colored the buttons on her little outfit. So I just used my darkest blue to color the buttons. And so here's where I'm uh, trying to figure out my layout and everything. And then I decided I wanted to die cut this image. So I used the largest die from the Honey Bee A7 stitched rectangle die set. And uh, just running that through my Gemini. And so and I have a nice stitched um, die cut background. And I'm going to pop the little girl up on foam tape and I cut the happy out of um, some Simon I use mostly Simon uh, colored paper for all my uh, die cuts and things like that I so I will have Simon paper linked down below and that happy is from Lon Fawn it's their scripty happy die and that sentiment banner is also from Lon Fawn it's everyday sentiments banners and then that birthday came from a honeybee stamp set called Happiness Sentiments. And I just heat embossed that with some uh, white embossing powder. I coated that happy there with some Nouveau Aqua Shimmer. And now I'm going to uh, stick my little girl down there. And I'm just using some Nouveau Adhesive. And I'm going to attach this to the front of my card. And so it gives a nice white border. And so I decided to add some shimmer to my watering can. Never having too much shimmer. And that is my card for today. Here is a final look. And I really appreciate everybody stopping by and watching. And we will see you soon in the next video. Mm -hmm.